Today I'm going to be looking at the Bondi movie realization Ronin Boba Fett figure. And this is another one in Bondi's line of Japanese style uh, Star Wars figures, or you could call them Star Wars style Japanese figures, perhaps. Um, they're basically Star Wars characters reimagined as if they were samurai or other military figures of uh, that time period. And here we have, uh, of course, Boba Fett imagined as a Lonin, who is a, uh, it's a masterless samurai. If we look on the back, we can see the various parts that it comes with and, uh, you know, just a few uh, notes about his features. And if we open the box, This one has a lot more going on than some of the other ones. Um, comes with a little instruction booklet, and here we have no less than, let's see, eight extra hands. He's got um, two fist hands already installed. He's got a sword. He's got six little... Um, to, I don't know what you'd call these. Some of them are daggers, some of them are more like tools. Um, they sort of correspond with Boba Fett's tools that he often is pictured with. And we have here um, the jetpack and also his blaster rifle. So there's a lot uh, included with this one compared to something like the Stormtrooper. So I'm going to go ahead and get him out of the package and see if I can make sense of all of these parts. So before I got started uh, assembling the figure, I thought it would be worthwhile to just put out all the parts that it comes with because uh, this is a lot more than the other figures in the line that I have uh, have come with. We have the uh, the hands, which as I said, there are eight hands in addition to the two that it comes with, uh, the fist hands. We have six little tools and daggers. Luckily the instruction uh, booklet does show you where to put these on the figure, and I'll look at that in a minute. Uh, we have his blaster, we have the sword, and we have his backpack. Now all of these, well not all the hands obviously, but everything else um, will go on to the figure itself. So um, it's worth, you know, first of all being careful that you don't lose any of these little parts. And also uh, just, you know, taking the time to figure out where they go and how they attach. So here we have Boba Fett out of the package, and uh, unlike the other ones in this line that I've looked at, main, namely uh, Vader and the Stormtrooper, um, this one has quite a bit more to do to assemble him when you take him out of the package. He had, first of all, he had a bunch of uh, plastic sheets and, and bags around various parts of his armor, just to sort of prevent the paint from sticking or transferring while it was in the package, so you have to remove those. And then, uh, if you look at the legs, he's got little uh, brackets that you can attach his various daggers and things, and those are a little tricky to get in there. You have to look at the uh, instructions, and, and actually the picture on the back of the box was uh, pretty useful for that, just to figure out what goes where. And he also has, up here on his gauntlet, one of those that uh, slides in there, too. Um, he's got, of course, the backpack, which just attaches with a, a little peg. And uh, this also has a removable missile. He's got his sword, which is like the other ones in that it sort of sits in a little holder, and it's got a scabbard. And, of course, his blaster rifle, which has a movable little striker here. And it looks pretty good. Um, I'll have to say, this, uh, compared to the other ones in this line, possibly because it's just so complex and, and it's got uh, so many more colors on it, uh, th this one uh, is, I think, by far the most impressive looking. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, he's also got a movable rangefinder there. It's it's really quite, quite an impressive figure in person. Now, I'd like to compare him 
with the Black Series Boba Fett figure, the 6-inch Boba Fett. And you can see, of course, uh, as with the Stormtrooper that I did uh, a review of a little while ago, there's quite a difference in size here. So clearly, even though these are ostensibly 6-inch um, figures, really it's more like, I don't know, 6.5 to almost 7 inches in reality. Um, we can look, well, let's just go from the top of the figure to the bottom and we can see some of the, the ways that they've interpreted um, Boba Fett's armor into a Japanese style. Of course, we have the helmet. And in some ways, this is the least Japanese looking of the helmets. Um, just, you know, the, the Boba Fett influence is very strong, although if we look on the side, certainly... Uh, becomes a little bit more Japanese looking. I'm not really sure, like, in terms of in-world explanations for some of these things, why a, a Japanese Ronin would have, for example, a rangefinder here. I mean, is that something that would actually exist? Probably not, but uh, still, it's kind of cool. We've got uh, very similar, you know, segmented armor here. Now, the color that they've chosen is more of a, a teal or a an aqua color than this uh, sort of standard Boba Fett green. I'm not sure why they went for that. Maybe there's historical precedent for this color. I'm not entirely sure. Um, the gauntlets here. Now this, the Hasbro figure is the Empire Strikes Back version, so he's got the green gauntlets, and they've apparently gone for the red Return of the Jedi version, so that's why that's that, uh, that way. Now we've got here uh, pouches on both both figures. We've got uh, one difference actually is that they've included a pistol and a holster on the Hasbro figure, but not on this one. I think in some ways maybe his sword sort of takes that place. Um, if we go down the figure, we have the same kind of yellow knee pads, and we've got, of course, on here they're just sculpted onto his legs, but we've got all of the little tools and stuff. Now one thing I liked um, about this Japanese one is if we look closely at his feet, I don't know if you can tell, he's wearing tabi, which are these sort of segmented socks, traditional Japanese socks, and you know just generally this looks very Japanese, but it's very close to Boba Fett's actual feet. So I think they did a good job there. I don't know if maybe there was some sort of Japanese inspiration in Boba Fett's feet to begin with, uh, possibly. If we look at the sides, of course, uh, the backpacks are almost the same, uh, except for the paint. We've got this um, cloth, and, you know, the, the belts are very similar. Oopsie, I lost one of his, uh, one of his little daggers there. You have to be a little careful posing this figure that you don't have them pop off and get lost. We also have the, uh, Wookiee braids here, which is also present on the, uh, Black Series version. There's another one! Hooray! <laughs> yeah, you know, this, these, uh, little daggers here, they, they look cool when he's um, just sort of posed, but you do have to be careful. Um, they do add a lot of detail, but they also add some, I don't know if I want to say fragility, because I don't know if they're going to break, but they, they definitely can come loose. Uh, speaking of fragility, this thing here, let's get a little closer, on the rifle is, the striker is a separate piece that, you know, that's really cool, but you have to be careful that that doesn't break. Similarly with the uh, the rangefinder. So if we look at the uh, figure on its own again, we can see, as I said, that uh, the paint job is... I mean, I've said this with the other ones as well, but the paint job is really well done. Very, very little in the way of uh, slop or inappropriately applied colors. We've got some very nice detailing here. I don't know if they've used a wash or what, but it looks like leather. 
um, here as well. Very, very neat paint job. And on the backpack, they've done it so that it looks like metal. And they've got some airbrushing or something here to make it look like there's some, uh, oh, I guess it would be discoloration or something from, from heat. Now, as I said, I don't know if we're supposed to believe that this is actually a jetpack jet that he would have used to fly, you know, in feudal Japan or, or what this is supposed to be. But uh, in any case, it looks very cool. So I'm going to have to say um, this may be my favorite of the three figures. Um, let's get them all out here and take a look. So here we have all three of them together. This is all of them that have been released up until this point, as far as I know. Uh, they do have a number of other ones in the works, um, including a Sand Trooper and um, a Royal Guard, and um, a couple other ones, mostly sort of focusing on the, you know, Imperial Trooper side of things at the moment. I, I would really like to have them try maybe some other... Um, maybe even some non-armored characters, uh, like a Luke or a Leia. I mean, how awesome would a Leia in Kimono be? But anyway, uh, here we have the three. And uh, I got the Boba Fett uh, directly from an importer for, oh, I think it was around $70. And that was including shipping. And the other ones a little bit more because I had to get them from um, American retailers. In any case, these definitely not cheap, but very, very impressive looking, especially in person here in front of me. Um, I'm not sure how much this uh, is conveyed on video, but uh, just the detail and the level of um, care that they've put into to making these is, is very obvious in person. And uh, I'm definitely hoping to get some more of these. Uh, the price is... A problem uh, for me. Uh, I don't know that I'll be able to be a completist for this line. Uh, for example, they're making a a stormtrooper kind of musician <laughs> figure. Um, I think he has a drum and stuff like this. Uh, I, I don't know if that's going to be like a a must-have for me. Um, I may get the the royal guard. We'll have to see. But uh, in any case, I am very uh, very pleased with these figures, and uh, I'm looking forward to putting them on display.